The ASP45 comes in at an overall length of 7 inches, a diameter of 1.5 inches. It's constructed of 7075 T6 aluminum with a really beautiful uh, black anodizing and it weighs in at a mere 5 ounces. Now, some things that you guys might be able to compare 5 ounces to, uh, I was looking around the house to try to find some common things. Uh, my iPhone 10, which is not in the studio, uh, because it was giving me radio interference with my wireless microphone, and this is like the 10th take on just the specs today, so the phone is nowhere in here. But my iPhone 10X with a leather, really, really thin case on it, not an OtterBox or anything like that, really thin leather case, came in at 7.4 ounces. This weighs five. To give you an idea, just how light this feels hanging on the end of a gun. Now, why does this have to be light? Well, this is a boosterless can. This was designed to run on a 1911 HK USP 45, stuff like that, with no assistance of a booster. So you're gonna have a shorter overall length. You're not gonna get that snapping effect with recoil and uh, just less moving parts, less weight added to the end of the gun. We'll go ahead and cover though, uh, what a booster is and how it works because I'm sure somebody is just about to ask that question in the comments below. Uh, so when you have a recoil operated gun, we'll, we'll take the SIG for example. Uh, that barrel needs to unlock and tilt up okay, during, the during the recoil phase. If you have a heavy suppressor hanging off the end, it's going to prevent that tilt up action. The barrel's not going to be able to unlock, the slide won't go back, the shell casing won't eject, turning your semi-auto into a single shot firearm, which nobody wants. Well, along came along the Nielsen device for suppressors, kind of based off of a uh, recoil booster off of a machine gun way back in the day, uh, trickled down into the suppressor world. Basically what it is, is instead of having a fixed thread adapter, which we'll get into their Addis series thread adapters here shortly, uh, instead of being a fixed unit, you have a piston, you probably heard that term before. That piston's threaded to match the thread pitch on your threads. Uh, and then it slides into a cap system with a spring around the outer diameter of the piston. So that, that assembly fits inside here in the blast chamber. So as the bullet goes through the piston into the gun and out of the can, that gas pulls forward inside the suppressor, compresses that spring and lets the barrel free float in space. Okay, so it's taking the weight off it. The gun can cycle, recoil back forward, boom, everything locks back up, spring snaps the can back, everything's hunky-dory. On this can, you don't have any of that added weight. Uh, so you'll have less weight added to the end of the gun because this weighs only five ounces, which is like the threshold for needing one of those. Um, so let's go ahead and cover the adapters. I just mentioned those. So they have what they call their ATAS or ATAS series adapters. Uh, now, Bowers was behind the whole pioneering of different adapters way back when before all the cool kids did it. Uh, so they were uh, on the forefront of shooting subcalibers as well. So you can shoot 45, 40, 9 millimeter, whatever's within reason as far as a pistol caliber through this suppressor um, by using these. Um, so in the pouch that it shipped with, check this out, let me grab it. They shipped with a nifty little pouch. They have in the top lid little tiny Velcro pouches uh, where you can store additional adapters that you buy. Now, with Silencer Shop, I had them send uh, an assortment for my 9mm and 45 host that we were probably using uh, for today's video out on the range. So I have the five, uh, 0.578 by 28. Okay, this is what it's going to ship with as standard. So that's going to uh, be used on your 1911s and your SIG 220, stuff like that, your Glock 21. And then uh, we have the 16 by 1 left hand for the HK Tactical 45. And then we have the... Uh, uh, 16 by 1 right hand for the HK Mark 23 and then half by 28 and 13 by 5 by 1 for my 9 millimeter host. So we have 45 and 9 pretty well rounded. What's something else is instantly readily used on? A carbine. If you have a boosted gun you have to remove the spring because you can't have a can hanging on the end of your threads jackhammering with the pressure and stripping your threads off of your host gun or the suppressor causing a lot of damage. Uh, you would have to put in a fixed spacer or use a fixed mount when shooting on a fixed barrel system. This can, you just screw it on as normal. Put it on a pistol the same way, put it on a rifle the same way. Um, back to their case, nice little pouch for the suppressor. You have a wrench to help install the adapter should they become stuck. And a pouch for the wire pulling gel. Which brings me right into the next part of today's video. Dry versus wet suppressors. 
This is a question I get asked a lot dating back to videos that are over six years old. Uh, the difference between wet and dry. So we'll go ahead and cover that. Uh, the noise from a suppressor comes from the rapid uncorking effect of all that pressure escaping and hitting the atmosphere at the same time. You put on a suppressor, dry, meaning there's no water added to it, and that gas now has to go through here and it bleeds off slowly, lets the gas expand and cool before it enters the atmosphere because it's trapped in each baffle chamber. Now, you add a little bit of water-based wire pulling gel or water and you're giving uh, that heat something else to do. Anytime you make it use up its stored energy, the energy is being transferred here instead of out here, downrange and in your ears. Uh, so when that heat enters this first chamber, and in their directions, you would take this, insert the nipple down into the blast chamber, rotate the can a couple times, leaving about a teaspoon of gel in there, or five cc's to 10 cc's of water. Sometimes less is more. With the gel, it will stay put, uh, but you need to you know, hit the can against your palm so you can spread that gel to the outer walls of the inside of the tube, if that makes any sense, so you don't get any issues of a uh, bullet hitting the gel and causing a massive catastrophic baffle strike. Anyway, once that gas enters there, it, has, it, it uses that energy and converts this water-based gel or water into steam. Well, when you convert it to steam, it's converting the water or gel 1,700 times its size. So you're making that heat do a tremendous amount of work using up a lot of energy and that steam is going to super cool that gas, making the air more dense inside the suppressor. So the more cool and slower those gases exit, the quieter the report's going to be when it uncorks in the atmosphere. Uh, so shooting a can wet, any can wet, is quieter than shooting one dry. Whether or not it was designed from the ground up to be shot wet or dry, it's going to help. Uh, just don't go adding a bunch of water in your rifle cans. A lot of them are not designed for the added pressure and could rupture the tube. So I hope you guys understand a little bit more about boosted versus non-boosted and wet versus dry today after today's video. I think that pretty much covers the studio. We covered the specs. We covered, uh, you know, the design of this can. This is a unique can, guys. This, this is a can for those of you out there that A, uh, already have all the booster cans and you're looking for something different, a niche within a niche. Or if you're like me, you just hate big, heavy added weight to the end of the gun. I'm telling you, when I first picked this up at my show, my expo in December, it felt fake, like it was some sort of display model. Have okay. you held this? I have not. Oh my God, this is real? Yep. I'm not like fluff baiting you guys out here. This is like crazy. It feels like uh, a business card or something. What, what is this? It's actually five ounces. It's a 45 ACP can. And Tom's like, no, that's, that's the real unit. They're actually demoing it right out there. And I went out there and observed some people shooting it in an indoor, essentially metal box, and it sounded phenomenal. Uh, so I'm really excited to get out there and show you guys the tone, the really nice deep tone it has. Um, so we'll grab some nine millimeters, grab some um, 45. So we'll go ahead and hit that range and see just what it sounds like.
Ladies and gentlemen, had a brain fart this morning, left the house for the range, totally forgot to bring full powered ammo for the 9. It says more than once in the manual, the suppressor, because it relies uh, heavily on the recoil of the firearm, uh, it needs full powered ammunition. I only brought subsonic 9mm, whoops. So this is most likely not going to cycle. I haven't shot it yet today, but I wanted to throw a disclaimer out there. Uh, the, for 9mm, you need to stick with uh, 115, 124 grain, full power stuff. You can't use the subsonics. It's just not going to have enough energy to move that slide back under that 5 ounce weight. Uh, that being said, I should have brought my Beretta 92 out uh, because you can tinker with the uh, recoil spring weights on that and you can get it to run reliably with subsonic ammo. Uh, and a suppressor. I know I have a really old non-boostered can on there from DeGroat Tactical that works. Uh, my bad. Mistakes happen. Uh, anyway, most of you are going to be buying this to run it on the 45 anyway. It sounds so good, but Let's see what we got. As expected, it didn't cycle. It was almost there a couple times, uh, but again, my bad, my fault for not bringing the correct ammo. Uh, but wow, that sounded really good. First shots fired from the new Ruger PC carbine. 147 grain hush from Freedom Munitions. Unsuppressed baseline. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed today's video. I tried to really run this thing through the ringer today to give you an example of what it sounds like in different scenarios. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the studio that this is definitely a can, a niche within a niche, and I meant exactly that. Uh, personally, I would use this if you guys are a fan of, a, uh, of the 45 ACP cartridge. Um, 
This is perfect for like 1911 use and the 45 carbine use, meaning you don't even have to swap the adapters since one's a fixed barrel and this runs on the 1911 with no booster, you can swap it from host to host without doing any annoying mount swaps, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, pretty good for a little backpack setup, if I don't say so myself. Huge shout out to ETS loaders. Uh, they definitely did uh, take some of the uh, work away from me today. It is a lot of work to run this camera solo, move it around, figure out how to do the focus points, stuff like that. If speed loading the magazines is gonna save my thumb and take another half an hour from my day, then thank you very much, ETS. Another big shout out to Freedom Munitions. We went through, I would say, 400 rounds of ammo today. So uh, hopefully it was worth it. I tried to get the camera settings uh, perfect. Um, the downrange should sound pretty cool. I had the camera itself set about 25, 30 feet off to the right side of the berm. So you should be able to hear those bullets whizzing by and slamming into the dirt. Pay attention, those of you out there that heed my warning or heed my advice and watch the review with quality headphones, you should be able to pick up, uh, when I'm shooting the profile view, you should be able to pick up the actual shell casing hitting the uh, grass. I know I can when I reviewed it. And uh, downrange, you should be able to distinguish the report of the gun and then the bullet impact slamming into the dirt downrange. Again, I already said this more than once, I apologize for not bringing the right nine millimeter ammo, but when I did have to manually cycle it, it sounded pretty good. Any of you out there uh, that want to purchase this for yourself, go take a look at the Silencer Shop website. They run sales all the time. I know this is already in stock and available. For those of you that stuck to the end of today's video to listen to my rambling, you get a chance of winning this suppressor. That's right, we're doing another suppressor giveaway right here on the NFA Review Channel. This was totally optional. Bowers came to me and said, hey, do you mind if we give away an AS45 with the review? Who's gonna say no to that? So they're helping me by supporting you guys for watching my channel. How cool is that? Uh, so I'm gonna run the giveaway on my Facebook page. Click the link below. Uh, I'm gonna pin it to the top of the wall so you should see it pop up. Should run about a week, two weeks. I haven't decided yet, but at the launch of this video, it will be live. So hopefully one of you lucky winners out there can appreciate this badass little can. Until next time, click that like and subscribe button because I have a lot more reviews coming.